Wait, where? There's another one too. Where? Oh, look at that. Please, guys. There's another four. one. There's no, we're, we're just excited. We're not. Yeah, they keep coming. Wait, I see. Whoa, look at them. I got that Wait. one on video. There's four of them. Look at there's three of them all together. I got the third one popping. There's one behind the chimney. One just I got four of them. I'll go find Maybe. 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 Maybe somebody's setting up lights. Did you see that? No, those are in the sky. The too. There's one underneath the house, too. There's one behind the chimney. Okay, come we need to go to the paper. Floor. I can't see how this works. How does this work? Holy shit. Oh, you got to keep on. Have you seen that before? No. That's weird. They're lined up in, in a pattern, man. There's geometry behind this. Yeah. I can't even get the this. I've never seen it. Look at that. Man, this is... What is this? Let's see. Oh, there's three of them. I suspect that... No. Uh, unless uh, uh, the Defense Department proves us otherwise that it was probably uh, some form of an alien spacecraft. So why didn't he say anything then? Partly, he says, because he didn't want people to panic. And I think as a public figure you have to be very careful about what you say because uh, people can have pretty uh, emotional reactions. Oh yes, we discussed it at every conference that we had with the military, and they never had been, a, never were able to make me a concrete report on. Do you have anything on the subject, sir? No, I haven't, I haven't anything on the subject, and there, there's always things like that going on, uh, flying saucers, and we've had other things. You know. direction of destroying our planet and frankly we appear to be doing very little about it. Decades ago visitors from other planets warned us about where we were headed and offered to help but instead we or at least some of us interpreted their visits as a threat and decided to shoot first and ask questions after. The inevitable result was that some of our planes were lost, but how many were due to retaliation? And how many were as a result of our own stupidity is a moot point.
Carp, Ontario. Another disc, much closer, and this time on the ground. The object was photographed behind this house. On my property, I've seen lots of bright flames. They were not like spreading fires. They were more individual flames going extremely high and a lot, a lot of smoke. I saw this bright, bright light. Right on top of it was like a beak and it was blue light pulsing and it had a, um, a light right on the bottom and a light right in the middle of it. And I've seen a ship just coming down over the tree and going very closer to the flames. That night was a very traumatic night for me. I can always, always remember that night. It will never be forgotten. I looked out the back window and, and in the sky was a great uh, golden globe with a thin um, red rim. The only thing that came to mind quickly was that it was lightning, but I'd never seen lightning in a circular form. There was uh, one specific area, a uh, circular pattern really, where all of the plant life had uh, been exposed to some form of radiation. And by that I mean it just kind of melted. Real healthy bushes just melted to the ground. You can see some indication that there's a, a solid craft there that you can see the top of and also see something underneath. But there, at least there is the hint of a cylindrical object here. It was a ship. It was a ship as big as my house. UFO over China. According to reports, an airport in Inner Mongolia was forced to shut down to prevent passenger jets from crashing into the unidentified flying object. Witnesses reported a bright light shining in the sky before it suddenly vanished. On July 8th, Shaoshan International Airport was shut down because of a UFO. Officials later confirmed the object sighted was part of a military test. This latest show in the sky makes for the eighth reported UFO sighting in China since June.
ಬರ್ತಾನೆ ahorita las, las tres que iban, iban por ahí desaparecieron en el aire sí sí la estoy viendo estoy grabando ahora van a hacer ahora vienen hacia acá pues sí, pero aquí es cuando como se ahí cuando se empiezan a uy pero igual es como Mira, hay unos que vienen de vuelta. Que se ven negro. De vuelta. Bueno, se ven en la cámara, no se ven así un poco. Mira, esposo. Sí, sí, es lo mismo que yo vi el año pasado. Pa. Llámalo, llámalo, dile que tu papá quiere conocerlo. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 Así no me pueden decir que bien Estoy inventando a mí me quedo, ¿verdad? Y ahí se empezaron a, a, a ir hacia la derecha, ¿no? threat. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet I ask you, is not an alien force already among us?
time. The reason I state that, when I got out in 1989, we had cataloged 57 different species. Uh, you have individuals that look very much like you and myself that could walk among, among us and you wouldn't even notice the difference, except for some of the things that uh, they might be able to go ahead even in a dark room and touch an object and go, go ahead and identify what color that object might be. They would have a heightened sense of smell, sight, uh, hearing. Uh, the uh, situation is that you have various types of what we normally call grays. We didn't call them grays in the military, but you had at least three types of the grays. You had some that were much taller than we were, uh, the unique thing I th uh, that I'd like to point out for the most part is that the entities that we did catalog were in fact humanoid. marks an anniversary that few remember and some refuse to forget. In 1942, an unidentified object was seen hovering over the California coast. The military, poised to defend the coast from a foreign invasion, took aim and fired. The event, called the Battle of Los Angeles, made headlines. What was in the sky and where did it go? Filmmaker and UFO researcher Jose Escamilla highlights the events of that night. What happened at, at 2 in the morning some objects entered into our airspace. One of them hovered right over Santa Monica and Culver City. Some described it as a, a, a round dome-shaped object that was about 100 feet diameter. Some of them said it was a little smaller. But the unique thing about it is the military, the army started firing at this thing for about an hour, hour and a half, but they could not bring the object down. Within 24 hours, the Department of War sent a memo to the president detailing the incident as possibly unidentified airplanes flying at various speeds and declaring the investigation ongoing. But that came to an abrupt end when the Army declared the flying object a weather balloon, sparking theories of a government cover-up. If they can't bring down a, a weather balloon with over 1,500 rounds of anti-aircraft shrapnel, 12-pound weaponry, what are they going to do against a real enemy target? That's what they decided. What do we do? Do we tell the American and the world public there is something among us that we cannot bring down, we cannot control, we don't know where they're from, and we don't know what they're doing here? No, they didn't want to say that. So the, the next best thing to do was to just uh, officially deny their existence. That's when the first official denial 
on UFOs started. I'm Fife Symington. In 1997, during my second term as governor of Arizona, I saw something that defied logic and challenged my reality. I witnessed a, a massive delta-shaped craft that silently navigated over the Squaw Peak uh, area in uh, North Phoenix uh, in the evening, and it was truly breathtaking. Uh, to my astonishment, it appeared that it appeared to be a solid structure. It was huge. Uh, it had a very distinctive uh, leading edge with embedded, uh, huge embedded lights uh, in it. Uh, and it was just traveling quietly, made no sound, through the Arizona night sky. I still don't know what it was. As a pilot and a former Air Force officer, uh, I can definitively say that this craft did not resemble any man-made object that I'd ever seen. And it was certainly not high altitude flares as uh, put out by the, uh, the Air Force at Luke Air Force Base, because I've never seen flares fly in formation. The incident was witnessed by hundreds, if not thousands, of people uh, in Maricopa County and in southern Arizona. And my office was besieged with phone calls from very concerned uh, citizens. The growing hysteria intensified when the story broke nationally. And um, so I decided uh, to lighten the mood of the state. And I called a press conference uh, where I dressed up my chief of staff in a Martian outfit. Uh, it was meant to be a spoof, a good-natured spoof. Uh, that worked. We managed to lessen the sense of panic at the time. But uh, I also upset quite a few of my constituents. Well, I'd like now to set the record straight. I never meant to ridicule anyone. We want the United States government to stop perpetuating the myth that all UFOs can be explained away in down-to-earth and conventional terms. Instead, our country needs to reopen its official investigation that it shut down in 1969. The United States government can no longer shun an international dialogue about this phenomenon. You look at stuff like this, and I don't know if anybody out here, I'm sure there is quite a few, have had a UFO sighting. Once you have one, it's hard to go back to just uh, your normal realm, you know? Things change.